The report uh, that has been released, uh, the current economic expansion, how Kentucky's nine regional economies are performing. Uh, tell me uh, when this study was done, uh, who did it for you, and then we'll talk about the findings. Uh, Dr. Paul Coombs, retired professor from uh, University of Louisville, is our senior economic advisor here on our chamber team in Frankfurt. And so the Kentucky Chamber, with Paul's technical assistance, produce a report about twice a year updating information that we're getting primarily from the federal government on how jobs, how, how the employment levels of the state of Kentucky are moving, what kind of trends we see. And one reason we brought Paul on board a year and a half or two years ago was because he and I happen to have the same belief that there's really no such thing as a Kentucky economy. Um, our regions are so distinct in Kentucky that it's hard to talk about what's happening in the Louisville economy and the mountain area and then the purchase area down around Paducah in the same breath. So we divided the state into nine economic regions. And uh, so his reports basically report on those nine regions. Findings, and why do you think those findings are important on the eve of a 2016 General Assembly session? Uh, good question. He has basically charted the growth of jobs or the decline of jobs in a couple of cases from the bottom of the recession, which was now about six years ago, June of 2009, through June of 15. So there's a five or six year span there. Uh, most of us, in terms of our own uh, communities around the state and in terms of our own families, think in terms of the bottom of the recession as being kind of the pits. And so we're charting from there. And the state of Kentucky has gained jobs not quite as fast as the United States. In some regions, for example, Louisville, Lexington, northern Kentucky, and then the Bowling Green, Hopkinsville area, we've actually grown a little faster than the national average. But our state average is slightly less than the national average. Of course, eastern Kentucky has been hit very hard, the mountain area, because of the loss of coal mining jobs, and then some of the other rural, rural areas like Cumberland, uh, down around Somerset and Lake Cumberland, that area, and then far west have also uh, not created jobs quite as fast as the United States as a whole. I think they're... So by the way, yeah, go by ahead. The way, they're currently, just the, the bottom line is that we're 20,000 jobs above where we were at the peak before the recession. So going back before the, the bottom of the pit, you go back to the peak before that, and we're actually 20,000 jobs ahead of that. So there is net job creation going on in Kentucky. I think there are a lot of uh, interesting findings uh, in the report, uh, Dave, and, and that is one of them. But those 20,000 jobs are really concentrated in just two or three uh, economic areas. It's not only a national trend of movement toward urban areas, it's actually an international trend. Even in China, people are moving to cities for jobs. And so here in Kentucky, the same. Louisville, Lexington, Northern Kentucky, and the Bowling Green area are the areas that are actually growing faster than the national um, average. Now, in manufacturing, we're doing much better than the national average, and since the bottom of the recession, we've actually grown three times faster in the recreation of manufacturing jobs. Now, we're not back up to the peak. We probably won't ever get back to the peak because it takes fewer people and better machines to create things today than it did six or eight years ago. But good news is manufacturing has increased at a very healthy pace. Part of that is led by automotive. You've got Ford, G, uh, Ford uh, GM, uh, Corvette plant down in Bowling Green, and of course the Toyota plant now making a Lexus in Georgetown. All that's positive, and that's positive for about 150 supplier firms that supply those big auto assembly plants. So is the message then to you, to lawmakers, and to the new uh, Bevan administration uh, what? That we need to uh, stress um, and work on more manufacturing jobs in the state of Kentucky? Or do we need to uh, keep what we have, be sure we don't lose those, and move to another model of economic development? Well, I think one thing that this tells us is that we have more potential in manufacturing. We have more potential in logistics. Think in terms of UPS and Amazon.com. Uh, we're at the center of two-thirds of the United States population. And so distribution, trucking, warehousing, airplanes, railroads, uh, a lot of that flows through Kentucky, and we can take advantage of that. So logistics, auto manufacturing, manufacturing, basically uh, high-tech manufacturing, I think has great potential for us. Um, our wages have not increased quite as fast as the national average. Uh, that's concerning to us. Uh, the good news is we're coming out of recession, 
but we'd like to see more growth in wages. I think, too, that you have to, in terms of what the implications are for the state and to the General Assembly, the most common theme across the business community right now, by far, is workforce issues. Companies having trouble finding not only workers, but especially workers with the right skills. And so we're talking with our educational institutions about how can we customize the workforce training needs, not only across the state, but in these regions. It's one thing to train people to do logistics jobs in Louisville because of UPS. It's another thing to retrain out-of-work coal miners in eastern Kentucky for jobs perhaps in, in that same region. So I think we have to customize our economic development planning. We have to emphasize workforce training, and we have to make sure the workforce training programs that we do have are producing the results we need for the economy that we have. Do you think the, uh, the trend is going to be to uh, continue to develop these urban areas, uh, the larger cities, the economic regions uh, that uh, do well here? Uh, and what is that going to do? Uh, what is that going to, to leave uh, eastern Kentucky, for example, or the, the rural uh, areas of western Kentucky? Where does that leave them? Well, and I'm not a professional in this area, but I don't see an end to the trend of people moving more to urban areas for jobs. More jobs are service-based. More jobs are knowledge-based. That's where your universities are, etc. But I think we can be hopeful for Eric Bowling Green. I mean, that economy there is as robust as any regional economy in the state. Uh, you can go to communities like in Moorhead or Murray, where they have universities, um, and find that there's a relatively robust economic uh, growth pattern, uh, in part fueled by a university and, uh, and graduates coming out of those universities. So I think we've got to acknowledge the reality of people generally moving to cities, but there's a great lifestyle. People want to stay near their homes. They want to stay near where they were raised and where grandmother lives and that sort of thing. So we've got to accommodate the regions and do the best we can to make sure skills match job opportunities in those regions. In the conference call, uh, when you release this report uh, at the end of the year with economist uh, Coombs, he mentioned that uh, we might ought to look at uh, Tennessee and Indiana for uh, some states who have done uh, some things uh, in, in the right way. Uh, we've had conversations before. Uh, lawmakers uh, constantly bring up those, those state models. What do you see in Tennessee and Indiana that uh, has worked that we might uh, replicate here in Kentucky? I think we have to look very closely at their tax codes. We have to be competitive with them since they border us and our, uh, some of our major urban areas. So we have to look at their tax code. I think in terms of policies, uh, uh, there's no secret that the business community in Kentucky has been for a right-to-work law for decades. Um, and we now see that as a possibility, uh, maybe even a probability, in the next uh, two or three years here in Kentucky. Uh, that would make us more competitive. I'm convinced that we're losing several thousand jobs a year because we're not a we're not designated as a right-to-work state. And for people who are not familiar with what that terminology and all means, that basically is a signal to business people of all. It's, it's a very strong sentiment in the business community that a right-to-work state means that they are business friendly and they're open for business. Uh, and then you can debate, you know, the merits and you know, what, what does that do to organize labor, et cetera, et cetera. But I think everybody would agree that within the business community and among people who make decisions on where they're going to locate their companies, being right to work is a very significant signal that they are pro-business. So we have to look at those things. One thing that Indiana and uh, Tennessee have that's a slight advantage over us. Now, we have central location. They could claim they have central location, too, but we are really at the epicenter of two-thirds of the U.S. population. Um, but what they have is that they have more urban areas. For example, uh, Tennessee has two Louisville's in effect, Nashville and Memphis. they got two Lexingtons in Knoxville and Chattanooga. And as people gravitate toward urban areas, they have a slight advantage there. Same thing in Indiana with, uh, of course, Indianapolis being so big and strong, but also the Evansvilles and uh, the, you know, the Terre Haute's, Gary's, et cetera. So they have slight advantages over us in terms of having urban concentration. Um, Dave, uh, w one final question uh, along those lines. Would uh, one of the counters to right to work uh, that organized labor uses is uh, right to work for lower wages, they respond. And then also, but at the same time, is the organized labor movement uh, in, the, in Kentucky, just like it is across the nation, 
Isn't that a shrinking pool of, uh, of workers? Yes, I think that that's a fact that fewer private sector employer, employees uh, choose to be unionized these days. Um, and both sides of the right to work argument use facts and figures that support their arguments. And so typically folks against right to work say, well, the, the right to work states in the South are paid less than, right to, than, than non-right to work states in the North. That is generally true, but that's more of a Sun Belt versus Rust Belt issue. That's been since World War II, before World War II, back to the Civil War, uh, wages in the South were lower. But wages in the South are growing faster than wages in the North. And so the proponents of right to work, like myself, would point to that and say, hey, if we want our wages to grow faster, we ought to take on that designation and become a right to work state. Um, one thing that Dr. Coombs also pointed out in his study that I think should be concerning to us and that is what I call the workforce partition, participation rate, or I believe he calls technically the worker-to-population ratio. In other words, how many people within the workforce age group, which I think is like 21 to 65, what percentage of adults in that broad range of ages is actually, are, are actually working? And Kentucky is one of the lowest states. I think only West Virginia is lower. We're at about 54% of our adults actually working. The national average is about 4% higher than that. In some counties in our state, it's as low as 25. One, one community, it's 25% of the adults are actually in the labor force. So you can say, well, what are they doing? Are they sitting at home watching TV or are they on benefits? A lot, frankly, a lot of our folks are on government assistance. And I, I'm worried that in some parts of our state, it's become a cultural norm that people aspire to be on assistance, that that's their career goal. Uh, they and their kids growing up under that influence want to get on disability or want to get on some other form of government assistance. That's not a healthy thing. When our economy is growing, jobs are needed, and we've got to have all hands on deck. Dave Atticuson, president of the Kentucky uh, State Chamber of Commerce, we appreciate you being with us, and thanks for the information. Bill, thank you for your interest, and uh, we'll uh, have a great holiday weekend.